Hey guys, um, <laughs> we're here uh, in, in Duluth, Minnesota, and we're here today um, at the Radisson. And so hopefully I have enough power here. Um, it looked like we may not have enough power, but hopefully uh, you're getting this. And um, we'll see in a second if um, <laughs> it's working or not. And if we can't, um, I'll have to maybe just cut it short, but hopefully we'll get through this. Uh, a lot of times you need a lot of power and Wi-Fi, but I think, it, it, I think it'll work. Um, I think we may just have just have enough, and so uh, um, we're doing it, um, the dog. And I, somebody just told me it was dog, um, dog, some kind of dog day. <laughs> so this is gonna be awesome that we're gonna be doing um, painting a dog on the day that we're um, National Dog Day or something like that. All right, so um, here we go. We're gonna um, again. I'm in Duluth to do a um, a I'm doing a class tomorrow and on Saturday, and then we're gonna head off over to. To where are we going? Then we're going to Dillman's, and we're at Dillman's. We're going to do a demonstration on Sunday, and also a class on Sunday, also. So that should be fun. And um, again, hopefully this is working, and you can hear me, and everything is fine, because it is not in my studio. <laughs> we're here at uh, Radisson, and right outside the window, right here, is um, Duluth, and I can see the I can see the lift bridge right out there, right outside there. And so let's just go right over right away to um, any, anybody who's new here. Um, here is my website. Uh oh, <laughs> oh there it is. <laughs> Everything may be a little slow. I'm sorry. Um, hopefully I'm sounding okay. And just let me know if I'm sounding okay. Somebody let me know <laughs> if there. Everything's everything's running okay. Well, this is my website for anybody who's new, and um, this is where you find out all the information and get on my newsletter and all that kind of stuff. And so you just go here, and then my supplies are here, so that you, all the newcomers can know where to go and see what, I'm, what colors I'm using. And these are the exact colors I'm using, and that are my palette and my brushes. And let's go right to the value study. And so we're doing a dog today. And in this in this scene, I turned it black and white to show you, only because I want to show you about the about the sky and the dog in the sky. If you look right here, the dog in the sky are pretty much the same values, right? You're gonna have to make choose one or the other. And I chose. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the sky to be. Um, darker darker than the dog and it's gonna be a different color so that that's okay um, but I'm gonna choose the sky over here to be darker and I'm gonna make the dog lighter on the top and like I said it is gonna be a different color but you have to choose those things right before you do the painting so you know what's going on and um, oh, anything else on here um, pretty much if you squint your eyes and you'll see that the darks are pretty much right here and going right into his mouth and it's kind of like the dark and I'm gonna make this area right here a little bit darker too and then of course this whole side here so basically it's a yin and yang type of thing where from here parts can be dark and this parts can be light very simple composition and um, this stuff back here I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that um, I'm not sure what that is I'm just probably gonna make it like blurry nothing you know, maybe trees in the distance or something like that. All right, so, oh, Sue asked me um, about, about the wet paint. Um, they decided not to have a demo at the wet paint store in Minneapolis or in St. Paul, but I'm gonna go there anyways because I have a gift <laughs> certificate and I may be painting outside. I may do a play near there in St. Paul, Minnesota. That's on, that would be on, uh, what day is that? That would be Friday, that would be a Friday. Friday, uh, probably in the morning, and then, um, so that's on Friday. I'm heading from Dillman's to St. Paul and to the wet paint store. Thanks, Sue. Um, what else is coming here? We got Gloria here today. We got Monica, Paula, Mart, Atina, Marianne, Wills. You sound loud and clear. Everything is coming through. Thanks, Stina. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were going to do the painting on black, so I threw out the outline on both. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I wouldn't have done this one on black only because uh, there's not enough black in the picture. And I, I like to keep the black paper for things that are really dark. And so it's very simple then just to put a little bit of light in there. And so this is a little bit simpler because using white because there's a lot of lights in there. That's the only reason I didn't use black on this. Hey, Pamela, hey, Paula, Sue. Sue, you're over in Minneapolis or in St. Paul. Okay, I'll let you know <laughs> when I'm there. Second here. We have a, a organic, uh, organic chocolate, ooh, where are you? Chocolate stout from Samuel Smith. I have no idea where it comes from. 
and I don't have my glasses on right now, so I couldn't tell you where it comes from. So cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Here's and see what it is. tastes like. Mm. I'm in a hotel room. Sorry, I don't have a glass to pour it in this time. <laughs> and I didn't want to pay, uh, pour it into a plastic glass. That's very chocolatey. It's very chocolate. Boy, it tastes like chocolate. Um, the fact that it tastes like chocolate and not a beer, I'm going to give it about an 8. 8.5. Let's give it a 0.5 just because I, I love chocolate. And so it has to be okay, right? <laughs> so cheers, everybody. That's the beer for today. Organic chocolate stout. Mm, interesting. All right, let's go to the tabletop and get started here. So as you can see, I clean my palette really well. And oh my gosh, I don't have a um, I don't have a paper towel. Hold on one second. There you go. <laughs> Hopefully they'll bleach your towels. <laughs> I, I'm working on actually I'm working on marble today, so this is pretty interesting. I didn't want to put a typical again. I'm not in my studio. I'm up in um, at the Radisson in Duluth, Minnesota. So let's go right away with the chocolate drink. May be perfect for me. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it is very strong. It is very strong. Um, it tastes really strong, but it's about 8.5 um, paintbrush for me. All right, so we're gonna start right. We're, we're gonna go right with orange and blue because the dog is kind of like you know orangey colors. So that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with a little bit of um, orange in that. And so let's do the sky. And I'm gonna make that a blue since I'm gonna go with blue. And this picture up here, where is it? Okay, it's all dark right here. So I'm just going right through there with the water. And since it is gonna be lighter than the dog, or actually I said I was gonna make it darker than the dog, didn't I? Oh, there's going to be a reflection here. Oh boy. There we go. I have to keep it up a little bit higher. Put my water cup underneath it. So, do I make the dog darker? No, it's still, I'm going to make the, I'm gonna make the sky darker. I decided that the, the sky is going to be darker, and so I'm going to go with some ultramarine blue. This is ultramarine blue. It's going to let it pour down. And go right into the car because the window, and actually I'm going to put some in the window right here because there's a car window right here. So I'm going to put that in there right away. And this is wet. I wet it first. If you saw, I wet that first. And so, let's see if you can, can you see me? Okay. Put that on. This way a little more. Okay. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So here we go. And if you have any questions, remember anybody who's new, just ask it away in the chat and I will look up on it once in a while. So here we go. So I'm using basically ultramarine blue in the dirtiness that's in there already. <laughs> so it has a little bit of um, gray, and I'm not sure what's that. And some people always say, why don't you clean the palette a little bit more on the top of them? You know what? Sometimes it's nicer to have another just instead of one color, have some other colors in the, in the paint too. So then it dull it down, dulls it down a little bit and doesn't make it so perfect a bright blue that doesn't seem natural just using one color by itself. So there we have let's do a little spattering in there. Just let's have some fun with the sky. I'll make it darker. Let it drip a little bit. This is gonna be darker later, so I just want to go in there right away. I'm gonna keep this hard, this edge hard by the dog, and so that's okay to go right up to the edge and don't wet it past the dog. I don't have to have it soft, even though he is fur. And a lot of times you want a dog to have a, um, the fur to be soft, but this edge is really important that he's forward away from the sky. So. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit there and um, worry about that being soft edge to make it look like like fur. It'll look like a fur because it is a dog, and you're gonna know. Just the mind is good enough to know that a dog has fur. You know, you don't have to explain everything on your painting sometimes. So here we go. And we're just gonna come in here. Now this is gonna be. This car is gonna be lighter. So let's go around that too. Now I'm gonna put something back here. I don't want to put green because I don't like green, and I know it's trees or something. But I'm just gonna make something up over there. I'm just gonna take some dirty colors from my palette here, and then just throw them in there. Orangey kind of. That's that's cool because it's gonna be orange in there anyway. So just making that a little bit a gray earth tone color. Just because, again, the dog will be very orange, and so that's fine to have that, whatever my 
my dirty palette looks like. It's probably still from last week. <laughs> so. You're going to paint without your glasses? Um, yeah, yep. <laughs> so I only use my glasses when I'm into the detail end of it. Look at this granulation that's happening with the ultramarine blue. Isn't that great? I'm gonna see if I can't put a little bit more of that in there. I love granulation. That's where, for all you newcomers who don't know about granulation, it's when the, the, the pigment separates on its own, kind of gives it kind of a cool effect in there. And it, it kind of sits into the crevices of the paint of the paper, I mean, and um, really cool um, way of of painting if you can granulate your granulate the pigment into the paper. It's not always easy to do. A lot of times, it also depends on what what um, color you're using. Ultramarine blue happens to be one that works out pretty well for that. And so I'm working on a big angle here today because of the light straight above me, and um, so and you need a reflection here. So now let's go into the car. I'm going to make the car blue too, or silver or something, just so that I don't need to start going some weird color that, I'm not, that doesn't meet the part of the color scheme I'm using. So basically silver and blue and this orange will be my color scheme. And so I'm just going to make a blue car. I'm not sure, it's probably a silver car from what it looks of it. And there's a black strip right here. So make it whatever you want, but just keep your colors together. Keep them, keep them in a the color scheme. And I'm using orange and blue as my color scheme. Those are my complements that I'm using today. And here's a little window that he's leaning on. I put a little bit of reflection of him in there, so right away, put a little soft edge reflection, maybe a little bit of the earth tone that I have in there, the orange. <coughs> Excuse me. And so. Try a little bit more of that chocolate beer. <laughs> wow, it's very interesting. It tastes just like chocolate. <laughs> like a dark chocolate, though. It's a bitter dark chocolate. So if you don't, if you don't like that bitter dark chocolate, you're not going to like that beer. <laughs> it's not bad, though. I, I don't mind bitter or, or dark chocolate. So it's good. It's one thing I will never give up is chocolate. <laughs> you can never give me give up chocolate. All right, so waiting for the things to dry here, but oh, look at that granulation. It's really, really coming down there. You can really see the pigment. So with the dog, I'm going to want to do this wet and wet. So I'm going to wet the dog, but I have to watch out right here. I don't want to go and touch that right now because then it'll come right into that area. And so I'm just going to wet close to that area. And then um, this is all going to be dark, this railing right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the dog and wet them from this point on here and kind of work them over. I call this wetting as you go along. You're wetting the picture as you go along into that area. It's still wet in the wet, like we always do. We float our pigment, but this time we float it into a part of it and just keep it going as you're going as you're coming along here. Put a little yellow in there. I don't have like a yellow ochre or anything like that. I have just pure colors and I mix my colors like a yellow ochre and stuff like that because it's like you can. <laughs> so, I mean, how many colors you want in your palette? And so I use the brighter ones, and then the brighter ones, I make the other ones with that. I mix those with the, um, like the violets and stuff, this lavender, and that gives me a nice yellow ochre. I don't need to have a yellow ochre. I can just mix a lot of those colors on my own. And tomorrow I have a, a watercolor class at Duluth Art Institute in, in their um, Lincoln Park um, building. And I couldn't get, I, um, I, I bring all the paint for this one, and so I couldn't get lavender. But lavender is easily made with this light blue and this dark purple. Or is it dark purple and this light blue? It makes a lavender easily, too. So I'm not going to worry too much about it that I couldn't get it because they ran out of it. Everybody's running out of everything. <laughs> you know, when you, if you ever order anything nowadays, you always have to watch out because a lot of things are on, probably on a boat sitting in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> so I couldn't get the lavender, but um, which is a really great color to use, but we can mix it too. This lavender with a yellow can make a nice yellow ochre. So like I said, you don't really need to have all those colors, and especially browns. Browns, purples, and yellows, and oranges all make great browns. As, my, as I'm making my greens, even though I don't like green, the way I make it is I use cranacinum gold, and my blues. I need my blues. A little bit of yellow and then I will float the darker colors into that. Uh-oh, it says that um, 
I may be affected here a little bit. Like some of the scenes will be dropped. And so am I coming that coming through clear, guys? Or am I stopping? Or am I got ooh, like that type of thing? I was hoping that nothing happened. Well, I'll just keep on going. I think it's still okay. If I just keep on going and don't worry about it, then um, it, it won't do anything. But if I start worrying about it, it's going to start happening. So here we go. I'm just going to go in the darks. And see, now that it's wet, I go in there and I form all the dark in the soft edges. I'm working wet into wet. And this is how come I always teach all my students, the first thing is to learn how to control your pigment in a wet wash. Because now I'm doing all these things on the dog that are soft edge, but I don't want them to go all over the place. I want them to stop at a certain distance from where I'm applying it so that I'm getting the markings like he has. You know, I want that to be like a certain spot. I always keep on saying that the frames are being dropped. Hopefully it's not affecting you guys too much. But it's better than nothing, right? I guess it's better than um, not having it at all. And actually, probably next week, I probably will not be able to do it because, again, I'm out with Dillman's, and I rarely have anything good up there with when it comes to any kind of um, Wi-Fi or anything like that. I may do a plain air. If I have time, I'll do a plain air outside somewhere and do it on, um, not as a paint along, but just as a paint, as like a demonstration. So again, see how I'm going with a lot of paint and that's the way you control your paint is with a lot of paint and not much water. The water's already on my palette or on my paper and so I'm just going in here with a thick amount of paint to make it so it doesn't run all over the place because the more paint you have, the less water, the less it's going to run. So I can sit here and I can get him to look really soft edged. I can give him all the markings where the markings are. I can get the darks where the darks need to be. I can stop it so I don't have to um, have hard edges everywhere. I want the soft edges like in the photograph. I mean, it's so nice to photograph. I mean, look at all those soft edges. So I like to work wet in the wet and learn how to control your edges within a wet wash. If you take one of my courses, that's the first thing, first two days is what we do, is we learn that. Because there's no reason to go forward if you cannot learn how to do that. You have to learn how to control in a wet wash because it's soft edges and soft edges are great. Here I'm wetting now down here. And there's going to be a darker part by his gums that's going to be really dark. But right now I'm getting the shadow part here, so I'm wetting this. And I'm not going to do his paw here yet because that's really light. So I'm just, I can go in there, but I don't want to, I don't want to actually go into that area. I just want to kind of wet this area. It kind of gets dark over here. How long have you ever did a painting from beginning to end, a commission piece? Well, paintings don't take me that long to do, um, but the, but um, my teacher always told us it's about the amount of time you've painted in your whole life, you know, basically. So, you know, my teacher always say when somebody asks you how long it takes you to do a painting, it's the amount of years you've been in school and all that time, because that all helps you learn how to paint. So it's basically, you know, for me, it's like 35 some years that I've been, <laughs> um, that's how long it takes to do this picture. 35 years because it's like all that information that you learn and all that skill you learn is from all that time. So for me to do a painting in an hour, it doesn't, it's really because I've done thousands of paintings. And so it's just a little bit easier for me to do that. And also my job as an illustrator, it comes in handy. And also I, I do it in the amount of time so this one's a little bit looser because I can't, I don't have that much time. I only have an hour to do this. So it's not gonna be as tight as something I have in my studio where I spend like a, like a, like two or three hours on it. So don't worry about time it takes you to do a painting ever. Don't worry about that. Worry about just learning how to use the mediums. And I know a lot of people like to know how long it takes them because of the price of their paintings. That's a whole nother issue <laughs> um, about pricing and stuff but it's all about how long you've been doing it, how long you've been painting. So you're not gonna be able to do this an hour as fast as I can because I've been doing this for a long time, long, long time. As long as I can remember I've been painting. And, uh, and in school and in my job as an illustrator, I had to do time limits. And so give yourself the time, you know, don't worry about the time, just do it. And um, if it takes you five hours instead of one hour, that's that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You, you're at that five hour mark and that's okay.
Take whatever time you need. And then I ever always ask, when is the painting done? When do you know when your painting is done? Well, it's kind of when you don't have anything more to do out of painting. <laughs> like when you get to a certain point, like if you're really tight, then of course it's going to be, um, you know, a lot longer than something that's looser. All depends, but don't give that so much a worry. And you know, people worry too much about how long it's taking them to get something done. And even in my classes, sometimes students don't, don't ever get their paintings done, or their, I should say, exercises, because they are exercises when I'm in class. I don't call them paintings because we're exercising. We're doing things to learn. We're not doing things, we're not doing a painting to take a home. I want you to learn something so that when you go home, you can do it again without me being there. So that's all about you know, learning in a class. When you're in a classroom, I want you to learn, and that uh, if you make a great painting, fine, but there's something you want to learn. And even with these um, paint-alongs, I want you to learn something, you know, and if it takes you a week to do one and then you don't want to do the next one you, because you already didn't finish the other one, just keep on working on that other one. And um, sometimes do these and don't worry about if the painting turns out or not, because again, this is an exercise and it'll just teach you. I'm here to teach you stuff, and that about if you get a nice painting. Because this painting is, you know, basically, you know, it is, uh, um, the, the images I'm using are okay to, for you to use, and even, you can sell it if you want. But you're here to try to learn, and that's what's important, is learning. And then you can go and grab the kind of imagery that you like to paint. Maybe you don't like doing dogs. I mean, there's a couple of people that will never do it <laughs> in my class. I do dogs because they don't never do a cat. They don't want to do a cat, but there's a lot of people that want to do cats. So it's all <laughs> depends on what you want to paint. But this tonight is a dog, and we're painting that, and we're going to teach you how to do this. And then you take it on and learn a few things from it, and then um, try your own. Try your own animal. Maybe you have your own pet, and try to do a painting of him or her. Any other questions? Boy, i got to get my glasses. Where are my glasses? You guys are asking questions, and the type is really small. Hold on one second. I'm going back here to get my glasses. Okay. <laughs> time we still have. No, I'll get behind it. Oh, let me see how long um, a lady artist said online she finally finished the piece she had done working over a year and it's finally done. The acrylic, whoa, I, that's great. You know, I mean, I hope she learned something from the one. I, to me, that's a really long time, but hey, some people, if it takes them a year to do a painting, <laughs> can you imagine? That better be a really good painting, though. <laughs> I think... If I took a year instead of saying done, I would burn it and never go there again. <laughs> Good job. Good job. I like that. Yeah, that's a, that, ooh, a year in a painting. Though I've done um, paintings where they've taken a long time and I've left them alone and then I came back to them like a year later because I didn't know how to finish it or it just didn't work out and then I pulled it out and I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's not so bad. Let's try something else with it. <laughs> Let's try and see how it works. And so here now I'm just getting some of the hairs. And now this is not, this is dry, so that's why I'm getting hard edges now. This now I gotta stay away from because it's damp and there's no more gloss in there. So when, you're, when your painting starts getting um, where it's matte and it's not glossy, that means it's not wet enough for you to do a wet in a wet wash. So you gotta stop and re wet it if you want the soft edges or start doing your hard edges on them. Man, look at that granulation in there. Can you see it now, the granulation? That is amazing. I love the granulation when it happens. It usually happens when you're using ultramarine blue. For some reason, ultramarine blue does a great job of that. Now let's do the paw here. So I'm just going to wet it and I'm just going to float some pigment in there. And I'm not doing my, I did the darks here, but I don't do my detail darks yet. I didn't do my detail darks. I'm just getting the lights in here and that happened to be wet. So I wanted to put some darks in there so I get the hard edge or the soft edge darks. I'll put in the hard edge darks, which are details later. And so now I'll just put a little bit of light color here in that color. It's almost white in here, so I can leave some of the white of the paper and then just kind of push push that in there and then push that into the window. And this will be defined, this this paw will be defined by the darks around it. And I, I can't put those in yet. I'll put those in later. He also has his ear back here. You can see a little bit of his ear hanging because he's, he's got really floppy ears here. So we're just going to put a little bit of the the light color in there. <laughs> cobalt blue is a, a lovely color. I don't have that cobalt on my palette. I do have Peacock, Horizon Blue, and Ultramarine and Prussian. There's a Compose, Compose Blue that's really nice too. That's a really nice blue for the skies. 
All right, let's go into our big darks over here because I've got my lights all kind of pretty much done. And so let's go into our darks right away. And so that's this big dark in here and, and the car itself. And like I said, I'm gonna make the car like a grayish blue, silver, whatever. And so it is a blue, so I'm just gonna go a darker blue here. It's gonna kind of bring it down. And just keep on bringing it over. Any question, guys, just ask, ask away. I look up every once in a while. Can't look up all the time, otherwise I wouldn't be able to paint, but um, just go ahead and ask the questions. So here now we're gonna go with a black. I'm gonna start with black, and here again, the controversy has always been that you should never use black and you mix your own blacks, right? Most people who have taken have gone to art school have, have, have been told to mix their blacks. Mix them so that you mix your colors to get black. I do the opposite now. Ever since I went to see a show by Andrew Wyeth in Rockland, Maine, and I saw that he had everything that was black. He just used solid black, and so I thought, why don't I make my blacks colorful by adding color to the black? It seems just a little bit more <laughs> easy to me. It's just, um, I don't know, it seems more uh, feasible to me to mix black, mix color into your black, and you'll still get a colorful black. This one is this one happens to be peach black, which is also a warm black anyway, so it's a little bit warmer than your, you know, ivory black. And so, do I want to make this? I see this is going to be like a blue. This is the side of the car that is like a, a black piece, but because it's reflective, it's going to be um, it's going to be a little bit less less black. It's going to be more blue. And then when I get to the dog ears, there's a shadow across this, and I will not put that in right now. I'm going to put that in later. So I'm going to go in here and get the soft edges. So I'm going to wet this again, get my edge here, and I'm just going to try to get a soft edge in here of the ear, and then leave this part light because that's almost white right there, and so I'll leave that hard edged. And I guess I did put the shadow in right away. <laughs> so I'm going to leave that, a little bit, leave that alone here a little bit, go down. Let's see what happens here. We get this dark coming through here. And then we'll get some hairs fur. And then that's the window. And underneath this paw is going to be a dark. And so I'm mixing black again with the color. And remember, and once I put it down, and also it's wet in the wet, right? And so then I, I add color. See, I put color while it's wet here. Actually, I might as well do that while I'm still up here. Otherwise, it's going to. I'll make this a soft edge, even though it's a hard car. It's a hard edge car. But what I can do is I can put these lines in here. I don't want them to be so important up here. I don't want a hard contrast lines up here. I just want this to be looking kind of like a car part, part of the car. So I'm just gonna put that like that. And it's a soft edge, but it's hard enough to know that it's um, it's an object that's straight, right? I mean, you don't have to have it hard, super hard edge there. This is the background anyways. Do I really want to have you see that part that important, make that that important? And if I want a little bit light, I can pull this out here a little bit. Looks like there's a little bit light right there. And so that, sorry about the reflection, but I can't, there we go, see. So let's see, we're gonna, this part right here should be the darkest because that's farthest into the car. So I'm just gonna put some solid black right there. Let that float. Get some more soft fur flying in here. And then we'll put the darks in here later. Let's get this big um, thing right here, which is like, I'm gonna use the blue of the sky because basically the sky is gonna reflect into everything. Even the dog, it's gonna reflect into the dog. And there's some grays in there that it will reflect into. So we're gonna go down here now. We're just gonna go with a blue. We're gonna wet it first, and I'm gonna wet it along here. And this should be lighter than up here, so let's just make this a little bit lighter. Maybe even add a little bit of light blue into that. It is a dark, though, in, in general, it's, it is a dark, but it's reflecting, you see in the, in the photo right here, it's reflecting the sky color right there in the photo. See how it's about the same as the sky color? So I'm gonna use this blue and since I want it to float up there, I'm gonna add white to it so that I'm using enough pigment. I'm still using blue, I don't have the paper, white paper to be able to do it, so I'm using white in my blue to make it a little bit lighter. I want that same blue, ultramarine blue, but I want white. 
now in there so that i pick up the same color but i can't use the white of the paper right now so i have to use white paint same difference you know it's white white is white white paper or the white paint mixed in with the blue will give it the look the color i want and then i'm gonna use some black here to make this edge harder again harder and then down here it goes to a little bit darker i think like it goes to more of a dark down here and we're gonna pull it up this way let's see let's go off the page yeah so it just comes right off the page boom i like that with this and all right so there we have that how much time it's seven o'clock oh we still got half an hour there we go see we're going too fast and so then we're going to go down here and now get some blue of the car some darks and so hard edges are great there see it's dry so you get a hard edge but what if you want to soften it just take a little bit of water take a little bit of water here guys I'm just kind of go like this push that over there like that and um yeah okay don't give me any glasses i'm not looking at this so then we'll go like this and what else we got here we got the dark oh i see that's reflecting of this of the of the sky again and so this is just going to be dark through here I think I'm gonna put the shadow a little bit more of a shadow of his stuff here just because I think it'll just look nicer to have a shadow here and it's got really dark in here but that's gonna be dark or that's gonna be detailed darks when I get over this spot right here I'm gonna throw shadows a little bit farther down the car just again it's my idea to just because if it's just a small shadow then you don't see it as much as if you make it a little bit bigger a shadow uh, there's a detail of the car but I'm gonna leave that alone I think let's look at that later okay I think we're ready to go with the dark darks so those are big darks now let's go to our detailed darks and that means small brush that means things like the nose eyes mouth I'm gonna take those because it is kind of like a portrait now and so I'm gonna go in and make the eye and so I start out usually with the the color of the eye if there is and usually dogs it's solid black but uh, I like to reflect a little bit of the sky color into it because it is kind of like glass. So I'm going to put a little blue there, put it on this side too, and then I'm going to I'm going to keep a spot open for the for the highlight. And so I always leave an upper spot here. I'm just going to go around like a highlight, and usually there's no white or there is some whites of the eyes on a dog, but it's very dark, and so. Uh, because it's laid back inside his head here a little bit so it may be a little bit lighter but don't go with pure white it's just it's too light too bright and then there's a lid so it'd be like a little shadow underneath the lid and then we have i'm gonna give him a little bit of a under eye like myself <laughs> give him a little bag right here i'm gonna put a little bag right there <laughs> Even though it doesn't have it there, it kind of looks like a human eye, doesn't it? Okay, let's put a little bit of more fur here. Just gonna kind of fur it up a little bit by making soft edges. And then I'm gonna put the bottom of the eye a little bit more blue in there because again, it's not that he has blue eyes, but there's blue in the sky, and it can reflect into the lens of of, of the dog. almost too far forward the eye because it sits back in his into his head more than what you see uh, on a human it's like because he has fur besides his skin he has fur so it's going to come a little bit farther back his eyeball is farther back and so that's come I want to make it a little bit more a little bit more orangey furry above the eye so it looks like it's farther back in the, into his head over here we got it Right, and then for his nose, let's go to his nose. And his nose, I have to keep the highlights right in the right on the edge where it starts going downwards. So I'm gonna go draw a little circle around where I want to keep away from right now. And that's but that's gonna be the spot where right where the where it turns over to the top, right where it goes to the bottom. 
And then we'll start out with the lighter color of the nose. Again, always light to dark. It makes sense to go light to dark, so I'm making it a little bit pink. I'm not sure why pink, but a little pink and a little blue in that pink. Again, blue from the sky. It's going to reflect in there. I don't care how what color anything is. If the sky is um, blue, you're going to have a little bit of blue into the into that area. Reflected color. Those it happens a lot. You may not think so, or it may not seem like it in the photograph or whatever. Do it anyways because it's going to help you out when it comes to making something look like it's in the it's set in the scene. Having blue in his nose may make it look like the sky is reflecting into his nose darker on the bottom part here. I'm going to go up here. And thing like the little bits of fur, like where you've seen some people do the, where they do the painting with every single little bit of fur, they do it by a small one inch or number one brush with one hair. That's fine. You can still do that with this. I, I can still do that with this painting. But first I'm getting the big parts and then I can go get the little small things later. I don't want to do small things because I won't know how everything ends up. I want to go with the big stuff first and then go down to the small stuff. You know, like I said, you can still go and do every single hair if you want. You can make it photographic if you want, but you got to start with the big picture first, always. I always got to start with the big picture, with the big areas of light and dark. So that's the way you regulate the colors, the um, values with the big parts. And then the small parts are just like like the lettering on the cake, on the birthday cake. It's the happy birthday on the birthday cake. It's the very ending. It really is not going to matter that much. More paper towel, yeah, or tissues. So now I'm going to go in here and get the darks. Like I said, the detailed darks. So inside his mouth. I'm not going to make the inside of his mouth black. I will make it black, but I'm going to make it mostly red. Red and black. So that it has a warm color. It's like you, with the nostrils of a, of a human. You never want to make it just black. You want to add a little warmth to it. Otherwise it looks dirty. You don't want the dog's mouth to look dirty inside, even though he probably has been chewing on a stick with dirt on it, but <laughs> that's okay. We don't want it to make it look dirty. And so we're going to give his little canines right here. And then we're going to do his gum, gum line right here. And so, of course, there's usually a little bit of black and then red. So I'm just going to take solid red and just going to float it in there. Floating it in there helps you, um, helps you make it look warm. Any questions? Let me put my glasses back on so I can see if any questions. <laughs> uh, oh, did it, did it go out of focus? Sorry, guys. Is it back in focus? Hopefully it got back in focus. So now we're going to go over here. I'm going to go around his teeth. And then his gum lines here. And then... If I want that soft edge, if I want that soft edge, I add water. I just let it bleed down with water. I add water to the edge of it and then just keep it bleeding downwards. And like I said, I start out with black and then add color. So don't feel like I'm, um, you know, if you've been told to mix your blacks and you really want to do that, go be my guest. You can do that. I have no problem with that. Um, I just find it easier to just do the black and then mix color into it to make a colorful black. How nice is how nice his jawline's coming here. Get some nice fur coming down through there, and he's got his gum gum line here. Yeah, let's see what else we got here. We've got that smile on his face. He even got like a like a little smile or going right here. So then we also have the little parts where the whiskers are going to come out. That's going to be right there. Again, I'm doing dark parts. Yes, I'm doing detailed darks. When I say detailed darks, it's not big darks. It's just small stuff that makes the thing look like what the picture is. You know, there's small parts, there's small details, like all the little furry hair, the hair, which of course <laughs> the hair is furry. Um, you can go in there and get each individual one later after you get the big, bigger ones, like the big area of darks. And then like in here, I'm gonna go and get little ones and I'll get my rigger brush and I'll go in there later on <clears throat> and get the smallest ones. Reminds me. Cheers, guys. Cheers to the chocolate beer. <laughs> chocolate stout. Mm, maybe I'm going to give that a nine. I mean, I'm, the more I taste it, the more I like it. <laughs> so maybe, we're going to go up to a nine on that one. <laughs> I'm getting kind of used to it. At first, it was kind of a little bit 
a little bit too dark chocolatey, but I'm getting used to it. So you're gonna go in here now, get some of these the fur in here. And it, it's kind of, it, it's gonna give the look of windblown hair too. It's, I mean, he's out, he's got his car. I'm, I was about to think of maybe putting a tongue in here too, like letting a tongue hang out. But I'm not sure how it would look over here. But if you want to hang, hang the tongue out, go ahead. If you got a dog, ask him to pose for you. <laughs> then you can get a shot of him with his, with his tongue out. Flapping in the wind. Because this is supposed to be like, you know, it's supposed to be flapping in the wind and all this stuff. All this hair, all this fur. And so that's the kind I don't do it really tight. And I'm just kind of like going like this type of thing. Because it should be looking like it's really going all over the place, the hair. And I did try to make this paw look a little bit more like a paw, like it's I um like to show the bottom of the paw, but it didn't really matter. It, it's gonna look like it is anyway, so I decided not to make it look just like a paw. And then look at the top of that window. So this looks kind of weird because I can't tell the top of the window or the top of this hand. So what I'm gonna do is erase that real quick. And I'm gonna put a darker window right there so I'm just gonna make a line that makes it look like the top of the window and then fur coming off of that and again detail I mean it's got to look right I mean you can't it's got to look like it's truly what's happening there so and then sometimes basically you just copy the picture if that's what you see so now I'm gonna get this negative painting into the window like it's reflecting so I'm negative painting this is a fur so I get a negative painting so it looks like this is a window see how it's shiny and it's still whiter than everything there so it's gonna look like a window and then you just reflect a few of the things that are above there reflect them into the window it doesn't have to be like a picture perfect thing in the, in the glass just enough and then also with I was thinking that with fur Later on, if you don't mind using white, you can actually go in there with, with your small rigger brush and then get it to do just the hairs, like just go in there with, with a brush and put hairs in it. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Now I noticed that this part, it got not dark enough in here. I'm gonna darken this up a little bit, so I'm gonna wet it first. I'm just gonna wet it up here a little bit. And now I'm just gonna add a little bit of darks into that area. A little bit darker, a little bit more fur looking like, and then the same thing over here. I want a little bit more of the orange in there. And then he also in his nose here, he's got a little bit of texture looking out of the fur. And I left the white of the paper, and that's fine. I should have left some of the white of the paper here too by his ear, because there's one part here. But instead, I'm just gonna have to use white paint, I've decided because I can get that back a little bit. So let's get the shadow side of his teeth because his teeth are actually in the shadow. They're not white. They are white, but they're in shadow. So we're gonna put a little bit of value in there and so that they're pushed back a little bit. And I think what we have left to do here, any questions? Maura texts, uh, Tina says a little bit darker, or Maura says a little bit darker above the nose. I, I think I just did that, right? <laughs> good, good, good view. You always, you always guys are always watching me. And I never mind um, criticism, please. That's fine. I, I'm not the, I don't do the perfect painting every time. And it's great if you guys find spots that shows me that you're, that you're learning and, I, and I'm teaching you well. <laughs> if you find stuff that I'm doing, oh, right into my the side of the thing there. Okay, let's see what we got here. Let's do some small fur. So now I'm gonna take my rigger brush, and the rigger brush is this brush, which is a real fine little point on, on it. The right eye could be cleaned up a bit. Underneath it. I'm not sure if I white like this white in here either. Is that okay, the white there? All right, let's go and do some um, little fur. Let's do some really fine fur. So what I'm gonna do is just in spots where I think, like here, little dots, and then I'm just gonna take and get some fur. The lines will look like fur, and actually, 
This has got to be all darker in here. Let me just take my number six, seven brush, eight brush, number eight brush. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is make it a little bit darker. Oh, can you see that? Sorry, guys. I'm pushing this all around, it's out of focus. So let's get some really dark brown. Again, how do you make it brown, orange, purple? Orange and purple make a great brown. I'm just going to go in here and do a really dark darks in here. But kind of do it with the fur, the look of fur. So you, it kind of gives you an idea too what's happening there. Like what's, is it going upwards, downwards? What, how's the fur doing it? So there, a little bit of fur up there. Again, you can take this as detailed as you want. I mean, as detailed. <laughs> Mary, other right eye. Oh, the sign. Oh, this one has to be complete a little more. How's that? Is that better? Um, I was using them, I've been using my number eight, my rigor, and then I was using. That's all I was using, and then my um, big round. But mostly, I've been using these two. This on this painting because there's a lot of work to be done with it. Oh, it looks like I need to be a bit darker right here. Now, look, so let's go in here and get right by his mouth there, a little bit darker. The nice thing is, when you're doing fur, is like you can go in the middle of a project and, and I want to get a hard edge, and I can do that and just make it look like fur, and then it's fine to have hard edges there. Actually, that's almost kind of what you want to do is first get all that soft edge stuff wet in the wet and then come back later and get your get your soft stuff. I notice right here there's a little bit of dark since we're here. Again, I'm using my number eight brush round. That may have been a little bit too harsh. You can also soften things up. Like watch, I'll go in now, soften up the edge. You can do that too. Use your finger. Yeah, this eye I don't want to do too much too because it's around the corner kind of and so I'm just gonna keep it keep it at that and then like like human eye there's always a little bit of red in the corner here so I'm gonna put a little red on the edges and then little dots on the nose not I don't want to have a big round dot like that on the nose I would just pointed that out what I do is I want little dots in there so show the texture of their of their nose a little bit more orange in his paw. I just noticed that he doesn't have any orange in his paw like the rest of his body. So, good idea to put a little bit of that orange into the into his paw. And again, doing it with a brush stroke, like like hair, like fur. I mean. Now I'm going to use my rigger brush. I'm going to use my rigger brush here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get um, a little bit of white. I'm going to use white. Oh, my white is all blue in it right now. Hold on, let me just get rid of this. i got to fill up my palette. I just forgot to fill up my palette. So I'm running out of paint. Let's just wipe that out there. Get a little bit of white with a little bit of yellow to make it a little bit like uh, the fur, the lightest part of the fur. And watch this. I'm just going to kind of go in here and just kind of... Wisping a little fur in there. Look at that, isn't that fun? Put a couple of that on here too. A little bit of fur hanging around. I mean, this is the part now where, you know, depending on how tight you want to get, you can get to where you put every single hair in there. I don't care. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, spend a year and put every hair into it. <laughs> and then you'll know you have it exactly right if, if you go every single one. And there are people that do that, and there's nothing wrong with it go ahead and it's just not me i i cannot spend the time uh, to me uh, it would drive me nuts if i had to put every hair in there i have a lot of students that um have painted like birds and and animals and stuff and they've put like a lot of the fur in there and it looks great again that's fine but remember to always start out with the big picture first and work yourself down to the fine detail stuff in here. Maybe soften the color on the right eye. It looks like a patch now. Are you talking about this blue patch right there? 
Oh, this this color on the on his right. <laughs> so you're talking about this area right here. That's too dark. So let me see. Is that too dark in there? Maybe soften it up a little bit. Maybe what I'll do is I'll take out take a little bit of this, soften this color up here a little bit. Okay, how's that? Is that better? I softened it a little bit up there. Soften that up a little bit. And it's the background, so it should be soft anyways as you're going back. Is this eye okay? Everybody okay with that eye? <laughs> Let's see how it is. Mean, I still don't like this is underneath here. Let's give him some. Okay. And this canine tooth looks like it's dark on one spot. A little white in there on this side. I think we're almost done here, guys. I don't know what else to do. Does that, does that look okay? Let's see. Can look at the picture here. All right. I think I think we're pretty much. Can't see anything else unless you. Oh, his nose is not red enough right here. His nose. I'm gonna make it a little brown right here in the side. And then maybe the ear. Is a little, maybe a little bit more dark right here, and then we're gonna be done. <laughs> Unless you guys can see something. So let's go in here and get a couple of things in there. All right, I think I can't see anything else that I want to do. Maybe right there, should I take that out, or is that okay? It looks like we're reflecting into the car. I think that's it, guys. I think that's it. Oh, whiskers, whiskers. Now, they're not like cat whiskers where they're really bright a lot of times, so I don't like to put them in really thick like cat whiskers. So make sure if you put whiskers in that you can either scrape them like with a, with a razor knife, or if you put them in, put them in really, really thin. And I'm just gonna put a few in really thin. Maybe this way, a few of them. A little bit different from the cat. Cats, it's almost like you need those whiskers really nice, but here the dog, just a few is enough, I think. I don't, I want to go crazy with the, with the whiskers. And maybe the small ones here in the front here, a few little whiskers. So there, and I think we're good. All right, so here we are in Duluth, Minnesota, and it worked out, I, I'm glad um, it did go through. <laughs> Do I want to soften the light places? Maybe I could. Yeah, I think you're right. Is, is that a little bit too harsh? That's a little bit too harsh, isn't it? Yep. All right, let's soften that a little bit. Good catch, good catch. Let's just soften that a little bit in there. We don't need to have it that, that hard an edge, and we don't need it to soft. We can soften it a little bit. There we go. Now we did it. Soften some edges, and let's take the tape off. And so again, next week I will be at Dillman's, and I will probably not be able to do a paint along because of the connectability of not having enough Wi-Fi to stream. And so I may run out and find a spot somewhere there by the by the casino. <laughs> they usually have Wi-Fi over there, and or, or my phone if I can get my phone to have um, a good reception because you don't even get reception up there with your phone. And so um, uh, we'll probably do a plein air outside where we're just um, painting outside. And where is my mouse? <laughs> Where's the mouse? Oh, hold on. I got to, I guess, to the right, the right image here, right? <laughs> so, so um, yeah, so next week we are probably not going to have a paint along. As in, if I do, it'll be in Tuesday's newsletter, which is going to be very, uh, another thing that's going to be very short because, again, I'm going to be up at Dillman's. And so, if I didn't write the newsletter yet, so you may not get much <laughs> this week. And after that, the week after that, we're going to definitely do one. I'll be back in Duluth um, after I'm in um, St. Paul, Minnesota. And then we're heading up to the um, Grand Marais uh, plein air event, which is going to be super fun. And I will definitely be online a lot with that one. And I'm not sure about on the Thursday if we do have a, a thing happening on the Thursday that I may not be able to do the paint along, but just Follow my newsletter and follow my um, website and you'll see everything you do. All right, guys. 
so until next week or until